Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Thermally Balancing Multi-Phase Converters and this is part one, genera. I'd like to thank Evgeny of IRP System Israel for critical review of this uh, work, which certainly made it better. There is some relevant videos to this presentation. Here are the links and I'm going also to print the link on the description part of the YouTube video that you are now watching. We are talking about a multi-phase converter. This is a multi-phase buck in which we have uh, in this case three phases, three half bridges which are driven, uh, delayed so as to get uh, interleaving and then we have of course uh, one load and the motivation of using a topology like this would be to get load sharing, that is the half bridges are sharing the load so that each one has a lower power. There is an input ripple reduction and also output ripple reduction due to the interleaving. We can run at higher switching frequency, actually smaller inductors, use wider bandwidth because of the higher frequency, and we are getting fast response to heavy load changes because we can sort of uh, operate the three inductors in parallel and by that get a high DIDT in, in case there is a change in the load. Now the classical approach operating this circuit or this topology is to apply current sharing. That is, we have some mechanism, some circuitry that assures that the current will be the same. And to do that you need to measure the current and this can be done by either looking at a sense resistor. Unfortunately, for high power, uh, there is some power loss associated. There is a more clever way in which you use the, actually the resistance of the inductor as a sensor. And then it's actually shown here by having a RC network here, you get across the capacitor a replica of the current of the inductor. This is very nice or you can use actually a driver which has a sense within the drive itself that is sensing the current of uh, the MOSFET at the high side or low side and getting it within the chip itself. Either way, sensing the current is not simple, takes some effort. For example, here you need a differential amplifier and therefore it is not trivial. The question is, however, why do we like to have balance? Is it because we want the same peak current? Is it be because we want the same average current? Or more logically, the same RMS current? Or maybe same inductor temperature? And finally, actually, we want same transistor temperature because this is actually the bottom line. We want a transistor to share the load and what is important for the transistor is not the current but the temperature so that if for example the, temp the transistor has a different uh, RDS on then you'd like to pass a somewhat lower current through it so the temperature will be the same. So the idea of thermal balancing is to make the temperature of the transistor equal or just about equal and this is the subject matter of this presentation. I'm going to show a MOSFET temperature-based balancing method, talk about the thermal sensing, the control concept, average model, and then I'll show some LTSPI simulation of the system. Now this is a part one of a two-part presentation. Part two is dedicated to the dynamic consideration, that is the, close, the, the control, feedback, stability, response time, etc. The first question is where to put the temperature sensor. Could be a thermistor, high temperature thermistor. I would say that the best place is actually here on the back of a transistor. This is the plastic part. This is the metal pad, the power transistor, which has a thermal pad here and metal. And here it will be the best place because if we attach it to the metal pad then of course we are influenced by the heatsink that's going to be connected to it which has a very large mass. So this will be the place but in the actual construction 
we're going to clamp the transistor to a heatsink and in this case we're going to have a thermal pad here we're going to have the metal of the transistor here is the chip and here is the sensor we're going to put it up there now the classical equivalent circuit of a thermal circuit or thermal system is shown here we have here a current source which represents the power going in theta is the thermal resistance between say junction and case and this is the capacitance representing the mass and the thermal capacity which is a function of the specific heat capacity of the material like around the chip here and the chip itself and then we have a thermal resistance to the ambient and the temperature here is the voltage or the voltage represents the temperature this is very uh, well known of course it's a classical representation however in our case it's a little bit more complicated we do have the chip here which is the source of the power here it is the power dissipated and then we have to the output to the ambient this way so we have some thermal capacity here and then thermal resistance to the ambient which is outside but then we have another path which goes like this goes to the heatsink which is much much larger the mass will be large and the thermal capacity capacity will be much larger and then from here of course there is the connection to the air and then therefore there is this uh, theta between the heatsink and the air so this will be a more appropriate model for this case now the values of course depend on the transistor the size of the uh, heatsink etc i'm not going to give here a specific uh, number in a specific case of a transistor and a heatsink but just a general description of such a system now the control is the classical sharing control in which we have first of all a feedback say suppose we like to maintain the output constant okay so we have a feedback from the output to a compensator comparing the output to some voltage reference we may wish to have current feedback because this is a second order system it will make life easier in terms of closing the loop and stability etc and then this output which is actually the duty cycle is now added to a deviation of the temperature of say one of the half bridges from the average temperature of all of them that is we sum up all of them divide by three this is the average temperature and we inject here the difference between this average temperature and the actual temperature of this particular stage now if for example this temperature is too high okay this will reduce the duty cycle and therefore less current will be going through this inductor and consequently in the steady state all the temperature will be equal this is used in the case of current sharing the difference is that we are not measuring the current and balancing them but we are measuring the temperature and balancing them now here is a average behavioral model that i've developed from the basic concept which then i'm going to translate to a simulation program like lt spice i'm going to use and in this case we have the following this is a dependent current source which depends on the current in say one of the inductor squared times the resistance of the half bridge average resistance the output resistance of the half bridge then we have this equivalent uh, circuit for the thermal part this is now the heatsink shared by all of them okay and then of course we have the heatsink connected to the ambient this is between the heatsink and the ambient and here we have the duty cycle from the, the sort of outer loop which is then added to the difference between the temperatures 
and the average temperature or the average temperature minus each one of these temperature going in here here and subtracted so as to balance out these temperatures. Here is an empty spice representation of the same concept. I have just copied the average behavioral model into the empty spice environment. We see here, this is the thermal part. Here are the sources. Then we have here the power part, which the three inductors, we are talking about the three phase system. This is the common load. And then we have here the outer loop, okay? Getting the reference here and then the output here through a divider, in this case, uh, one half, one to one here. And this is the output. So the output is connected here and compared to the reference. And then we have here this thermal control in which we first of all take the average here, we'll see it later on, and then generate here the difference. So let's have a look at it a little bit in more details. This is the thermal part. Now I've put here 50 degree as the ambient, also here for the heatsink, except that here I've put or prepared a, you might say a thermal pulse which when running, this is not running now because uh, we have a uh, first voltage of 50 and then 50, so it's just 50, constant 50. But when activated, I'm going to put here 60, so there'll be a pulse here of one second with a period of two seconds of like the environment being changed, changed from 50 to 60 degree, just to see the dynamic response of the system. This is now the thermal control. Here we have this summation of the three temperature. This, these voltages represent the temperature divided by three. So this is here, this is this uh, ER voltage. And then here we take the difference between this sum here, or this average I should say, minus the temperature of say T1 and get this signal here. So this signal here represents a deviation of T1 from the average. And same thing of course for here and here for the two other terms. And then we have here the power stage. This is uh, the load. Uh, this is the capacitor. There is a preparation here for actually measuring the current. I'm not doing it in this presentation, but you can use a voltage source of zero voltage just as a marker for the current passing through it. These are the inductors here, the inductors. And here there is a behavioral voltage source, which is defined as the input voltage, like the battery voltage, the supply voltage, times the combined duty cycle, which will give you the average voltage of the half bridge. So this is the average voltage of the half bridge. There is also a max uh, operator here so as to avoid negative numbers because uh, if you allow them then the system might lock into a non-realistic duty cycle like minus 100 or something like that. So this is just a precaution. And then there is also a preparation here for a disturbance. This is a 0 to 10 amp pulse loading just to see the dynamics of the system while it's running. So here is a, some plots of a run. This is 10 seconds, but this is not zero, it's after the transient uh, period. We see here the output voltage, it's about 2.4, it's 1.2 times two. We see the temperature of the transistor starting, it was starting from 50 and then now it's climbing up because we haven't reached a steady state. This is the temperature of the heatsink. Also it started at 50 and it's climbing up. And here we see the inductor current. These are the three inductors. And the objective here of this current is of course to maintain the output voltage while there is a 10 amp pulse load here. Okay, I'm not showing the 10 amp. They obviously, when the 
inductor current is high, this is when you have an extra 10 amp load. And as you can see, this, this actually represents the outer loop, the voltage loop. You see that uh, the system is, is very good, very fast, and you barely see any change uh, in the output due to the pulsed load. And here is just about the same type of an output, but after 2000 seconds. So the system has sort of stabilized already. We see that the temperature of the transistor is uh, 100 degrees, 104 degrees. Uh, the resolution here is, is very nice, uh, so it's, it's about stable. The heatsink is still sort of climbing up, but you see that the resolution here is, uh, we are talking about uh, fraction of a uh, centigrade. Okay, this is 101, and the difference is here, I like, uh, uh, milli degrees okay so uh, it's basically stable already and again we see the inductors uh, current going up and down in response to the low chain very nice now I'm going to demonstrate the behavior of the system when it is exposed to a pulse in the ambient temperature obviously a pulse is not realistic I'm just doing it just to see the response of the system a little bit about the dynamics as I've said I'm going to talk about the dynamics and how to design the control in the next uh, video on this subject so here it is in this case we're pulsing the temperature of one of the half bridges from 50 to 60 the ambient temperature and first of all we see the output is still maintained this is by the outer loop we see some changes in the temperature of all the units okay because it's affecting all the units this is again the heatsink which is not stabilized yet again this is uh, because uh, the run is not long enough and here we see what happens to the inductors current while the, the ambient temperature is pulsating this t1 this is the one that is exposed to this change now this is actually sort of the zero case 50 degree and here the ambient is jumping to 60 so therefore this half bridge is now receiving a lower current while the other ones are receiving a higher current so as to maintain the same temperature to all of them very very nice so it really works very nice so let me summarize here I've shown a MOSFET thermal balancing approach now the pro side is that it's a simpler circuit, no question about that. There's no extra dissipation as you might have with a sense resistor for high current. There is no need for differential amplifiers. Okay, uh, you can uh, have a thermistor which is uh, an output refer to the ground, and it is suitable for cases in which you have an outside transistor, discrete transistor, not a integrated driver in which many times the driver include measuring the current within the driver but if the power is high you need an extra transistor a discrete transistor so this is suitable for the, such a case now the con side is that uh, there is no overcurrent protection but again you would like probably to measure the total current and you can use it for protection and also it's a little bit me more mechanically involved because you have to place the thermistor on the transistor and somehow epoxy it uh, on it uh, so there is a issue a little bit in here so this brings me to the end of this uh, part one presentation on this subject i hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much